Hey everybody, hope all is well in your world. Uh, this little video here is um, a compilation of some clips from three different interviews I, uh, that were conducted with Gigi while he was doing, um, he was in North Carolina doing the vocals for the Anti-Scene record back in May of 1991. Two of the interviews were from the night of uh, the Repo Records in-store, and uh, then the there's some footage of one uh, from the next day, the next morning. Um, you can hear birds chirping in, in, the, in, the, in the audio port. It's kind of funny. Uh, anyways, uh, just thought I'd throw this together and uh, put it up there for you guys to check out. Some of this footage is unreleased. Uh, some you might have seen in other places or clips here and there. But uh, enjoy it. Thanks for your support. I appreciate it. And um, have a great day, evening, or whatever. I came in on a sold out flight. It was overbooked, and there was a seat beside me that was empty. <laughs> Every other seat in the plane was taken. The guy That's on the end asked if he could move. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, it's not a joke. It's funny, but he had a suit on. He asked the students if he could move. I'm thinking, well, great. I'll have three fucking seats. I don't care. <laughs> Put my bag in this one. and. That would suck, man. Nah, I, 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 I probably even smell really bad on the way home. Yeah, no one's gonna sit beside me. What if they'll charge me for three seats? <laughs> Got a GG Allen flying, triple the rate. As a child, I, I mean, I, I've obviously grown and matured a lot, but I've always sort of felt the exact same way. I've always felt, I've always been this one person. I've always been a loner. I've never really felt like hanging around with people. I never really cared about anything except myself and what I wanted to do. And I always put people second to, to even rock and roll back then. As I know now, that was how it had to be. I mean, I think what I do is very intelligent. I think. Uh you know, I think it's the stupid people who are watching MTV. I think it's the stupid people who are playing the corporate game. I think I'm an intelligent motherfucker. I mean, I got a brain that works ten times over time. So I'm not surprised at that at all. I've had people, professors write to me before. I've had writers write to me before. Poets. People with extreme intelligence stand behind what I do, say it's necessary. So I don't think that, uh, like I say, I think that what, you have to be intelligent to do what I do. I mean, there's a certain, I mean, to, to the whole dangerous street aspect of it, you, but you really got to have a brain. You got to know what the fuck you're doing. I mean, I think my writing reflects a lot of, of that as well. I mean, you listen, you probably listen to, a lot of people listen to a lot of records and just think, this guy's an ignorant, stupid bastard. But, you know, you gotta look beyond some of that and really figure out who the man really is. Do you consider yourself an artist? Um, several people compared you to not only well, people our, like Iggy Pop and well, I don't know. He, he, Jim Morrison. Yeah, but all you know, those people. That kind of thing. And yeah. I mean, to an extent, but, but a lot of those people just went so far and then turned around and went the other way. It's like, well, we'll do it for a little while just to get attention, and then we'll sell out and make a lot of money. I mean, that would be easy for me to do. If I said, fuck it right now, went and put out a commercial album, went to some major companies with the name that I got, I, I'd have a very good chance of probably making a lot of money. But, but why? I mean, that defeats everything that I've done for 13 years. That's like saying that the last 13 years didn't count. We'll start all over. So I'm, you know, I'm going all the way. I'm not going to go halfway and then turn around. I'm going to go all the way, and I'm just, I'm just taking everything else. I mean, as far as doing the inventory in my head, I'm also doing the inventory of in my body. I'm just letting everything out, and I'm giving it to the audience. How do they usually react to that? They usually run. <laughs> um, what do you wear on stage? Generally, nothing. So maybe this dog collar, which I never take off. 
Do clubs have a problem with that? Cops have a problem with it, I think, more than clubs do. I don't really think the, the clubs have a problem with it. I mean, I, I, some way, it depends on where you play. Mm -hmm. I've heard that I mean, in the major said. cities, they don't have a problem with it, but in Milwaukee or New Haven or Charlotte, maybe they would. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I've heard that a lot of your shows get shut down pretty early. Or yeah, they, they all do. There's either two places you can go after a Gigi show, jail or the hospital. <laughs> but in the meantime, when I'm out, it's, it's going to be just tour continuously and, and get everything done for the mission. The mission plan is number one. Go out and make sure that when I am ready to do it, that everything is set for people to follow when I'm gone, that it will still be there and it will still be that dagger in everybody's back and this black cloud, it won't go away because I'll make sure I set it up that way before I go. I, I believe in uh, exercising your demons. I, I believe that I'm all three because I am, for one, but I don't, why do I want to look towards and so another thing, I mean, you got to, I'm me and I'm everything. I'm God, I'm the devil, I'm everything because that's who I am. I'm just put everything into me. And I, I'm prepared actually for any situation. Because that that's like, I mean, you train yourself in life. If, if you shelter yourself and, and, and you just, you know, never experience pain or you never experience hardships when they hit you you're going to be wiped out you're going to lose you're going to be down and you're going to be taken advantage of and you're going to be sucked in and, and you're going to be out so you got to build that endurance like i said you got to put the fear you got to put the danger into it you got to wipe out the people brainwashing the people to think this is outrageous that is outrageous because we tell you it is when it isn't. It's all a media thing. They're telling you what is safe, what is dangerous, and what they put as dangerous is not dangerous at all. They just want me, you to think that. I mean, I've slept, on, I've slept in the streets. I mean, I've done tours on Greyhounds, and, and, and I mean, I've lived in boarding houses. I've lived on the street. I, you know, I've, I've, I've lived in the most crucial situations that prison wasn't, I mean, if you live this sheltered life and, and you never put yourself through this pain or torture and you go to prison, you're probably going to get eaten up by the maggots. Whereas if you've already put yourself through the basic training and keep, keep throughout life torturing yourself, putting yourself through this pain to endure more strength, you can encounter anything and beat it. Because it takes a very strong person to really want to die for it really believe in it that strong because like I say everybody's playing that corporate ladder everybody wants to they start out underground and then they eventually as they get older they start selling out climbing up that ladder and they play the game they play society's game I mean I came along so whether somebody would come along behind me is possible I don't really see that it's very probable there is but this one thing that a friend of mine who's writing an article wanted me to pass on to you. He's been taking this picture of Queen Charlotte around to beauty shops and places like that and asking what they would do to, to remodel her and he wanted to know what you think of her looks, would you marry her, would you take her to the prom, would you bathe her, etc, etc. He just wanted to know your comments on Queen Charlotte. Well, it looks like Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. <laughs> Well, it's our, I mean, it, the looks aren't really all that important. Maybe if I could take her out and wine her and <laughs> get to know her first, we could have had a serious thing. And then I could have married her. She could have been the future Mrs. Al. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen. Get this on. This is Gigi's wife to be in the next world. She's probably waiting for me in the next world. That's it. She's dead, right? 
You can put that. She's going to be my wife next world.